Spotlights in cold deck roofs. It's one of the biggest questions that's asked of me. How do you do it? Well, I want to try and explain it to you. But before I explain it to you, I want to show you some of the problems that we, we get with these. All these pictures that I'm actually looking at over here are taken when I'm doing site surveys. People have got problems with their roofs. I'm taking all of this video and these photographs through the holes in the plasterboard up into the void and you can see the, the problems and the devastation, etc., that has gone on inside. Now, whether or not all of that damage has actually happened from the spotlight being in the ceiling and the warm, moist air from inside the room going up there or not, or is there other problems, I can't really say, but it's normally above spotlights or areas where there's movement of air. This is a new type light where it's pretty sealed. There's a, there's a rubber gasket there, and when this is put up inside the light, hole just there. It does seal a lot better than the old ones that used to have a can at the back and you used to be able to change the bulb and when you took the when you took the bulb out you could look in there and you could see that the air was able to flow all the way through. And this is pretty sealed with a, um, a heat sink on the back and these are sold as insulational insulation coverable. Now that is something, well, you go, great, insulation coverable, I can cover it with insulation. You've got to talk to the manufacturers and go, what does that actually mean? Well, what it actually means is that it gets covered with something like this in a loft and that works. They've tested it that that works. That's what insulation coverable means. So here's a few scenarios that they say that you can do and you probably can do them, but it's like, well, hang on, is this really going to happen on a, on a building site or when I'm having an extension or a loft conversion done? So they talk about, lots of people talk about taking a divot out and fitting it into that divot. Well, your thermal element has just been broken. How do you put your vapour barrier over the top of it? People say to me, oh, well, you can go in and out of it. Well, earlier, earlier on, I did this. Now, it's the amount of time it took to do that. That's a, the correct vapour barrier which should go up there and be continuous. I cut a hole in it. I did everything I could do to make it airtight. I, I did all the tapes and everything around it. And yeah, look, I can do that. I've got to tell you, it's raining outside. This is a test rig that we're in. And I'm going to be showing you all sorts of different things with the test rig that's going on here. Um, and at the moment, the water's dripping through, which is really interesting because the roof's not on it. But when it's dripping down here, it's, it's going to be an excellent example to show you how to find uh, leaks. Anyhow, so you could do that and you could go there you go I've been able to put that together put that up there I cut through my plasterboard I stick my light into that is that okay well again is that enough clearance around the outside what about the clearance between the back of the light and the back of that piece of plastic you need to talk to the manufacturers of the light the people who are doing the, who supply the the membranes for the vapor control and you need to make sure that you've got all of these things sorted out before you actually go and do it but even if they did say that you could go and do it let's get rid of that leak there even if they did say that you could go and do it are you, do we expect that anybody on a building site is going to be able to do all of that make sure it's airtight and guarantee it and I, I, I think not I don't think that's the way to go now there's another way that this could be done because there's a manufacturer out there who makes these things and so let me just get it for you Right now, these uh, and these, this 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 company, uh, Thermahood, supplied these to me for nothing. I started to talk to them about it, and I've got to say, they show you how to do this, and they show you how to do this successfully on a video, and it's worth going and watching. But again, will the manufacturers say that you can actually install that in there with? that light fitting in there and it's going to be correct and there's enough movement for the air to stop this from downgrading itself because they reckon that they, these are like 5,000 hours of use. However, if you put it in there and there's a build up of heat because there's no movement of air, everything's airtight, no movement of air and it's covered with, with insulation around the outside, the heat build up is going to downgrade the uses of that. So again, I did this example and there's the thermo hood and I've sealed it all the way around with the vapor barrier it's doable but we're expecting a builder or somebody to do that in a job 
seal the cables backward and forward, get that installed up there and airtight at a cost. You know, that's costing them time and money and it's costing the customer time and money. And not only have we ex are we expecting them to do that and it to be totally airtight, we're also got to find a light fitting that the manufacturers say it's okay to go in there and it's not going to downgrade it by whatever it might be. So, you know, at the end of the day, I still think that there's a long way to go with these lights. It's not answering all the questions of how you can do it into this kind of thing, but I'm going to show you a few ways of doing it in a second. Um, and anybody who, manufacturers or anybody out there who's found a light fitting, that can be put into solid insulation with no movement of air and the insulation around it. And the manufacturers have said, yes, you can do it. You've got to send me a link to it because, you know, that, that is gold dust as far as I'm concerned. I've not been able to find one, even though these are quite new on the market, these particular ones. So let's just have a look and make sure it's really, really clear to everybody the what people are doing out there. So using this again, you can see here, we've got the plasterboard. What I've, what I've built here is this is, up here is your roof, timbers, 50 mil gap up there for your air movement to go backward and forward, 50 mil gap. Now here, this is a, a prop that I spent loads and loads and loads of money on designing, specially designed, especially for everybody here. Look at this. This is what you've got to think about. If we think here that this represents our movement of air, not only have we got movement and air backward and forward like that, because we've got a vent this side and we've got a vent this side, movement of air in this gap above the top of the ceiling here. And also look, it's going down inside the light fitting as well. So that's what's going on up above here. And if somebody has cut a hole right the way through the insulation, right the way through the vapour barrier, which is in there, you can just see the vapour barrier, and then they've stuck the light in the other end here, and that light goes in. If that light isn't sealed correctly, and also remember the heat build up, you've got to talk to the manufacturers all about it, etc. But if that is not um, uh, um, fitted in there airtight, that air that comes through there, which will have moisture in it, if if the venting, which we see all the time, is not done very well, that air is getting up here, moist air, and that's why we see the back of the roof, because that is representing the back of the roof there. The back of the roof, which is cold, that's why it's called a cold deck roof. 50 mil ventilation in between there. That warm, moist air is coming up, and that is making that really, really, um, a, a disaster waiting to happen because of condensation that might happen on the back if all the conditions were correct. I now need to show you how to do it in a ceiling and the only way that I know how to do it in a ceiling and even that you're probably not going to like. So before I do I wanted to just go into this kind of scenario because this particular light fitting is a slim light fitting and this is designed to fit just in the thickness of the plasterboard like so. So you don't break through the vapour barriers, which are up here. It'll just fit into the plasterboard and it won't go through the vapour barrier. This is a drop ceiling, I'll show you that one in a second. And that would go in there like that quite nicely. However, you've got a driver that comes with it, which is a transformer. That in itself will cut out if it gets too hot. Where do you put it? You can't put it into the insulation there. If you've got that kind of insulation, which is underneath it, you might be able to cut it into there, but it can't breathe and it can't get, it can't dissipate its heat. So is that gonna cut out? So, you know, again, these might be good. And I've got to say, this is an old one. There's some newer ones of these on the market that I've seen, which are actually quite smart, a little bit more smarter than this. So they're going in the right direction, but nevertheless, it's still not the perfect answer. So an answer, not perfect to everybody, is to do a dropped ceiling. I've brought this down 75 mil under the vapour barrier, which would be continuous. A continuous vapour barrier everywhere, which is airtight. We have not broken into it. I've got to keep straight stressing that. Above here, up there, you've got this movement of air going backward and forward, backward and forward. Here, we can't break into it. It will be continuous everywhere. So, if you do a drop ceiling, you can now put that light fitting into the drop ceiling like so okay and I've got a torch here 
Okay, let's just, just check so you can see. That is in the dropped ceiling just there. Let's turn that one down a little bit. So, the light fitting's in the drop ceiling and you can put transformers and everything else like that in there. However, look at the clearance here. Even with 75 mil down, is there enough clearance? You've got to talk to the manufacturers and make sure that they're happy with that. They might say, yeah, you can have five, five mil clearance. As long as they're happy, as long as the manufacturers of your vapor barrier are happy that that heat source is five mil down below, that works. But who wants to drop down their ceiling 75 mil? That's the, that's the scenario we've got. So if you need any more information about how to fit these lights, please get in touch with me. And if you need anything else, again, please get in touch with me. Speak soon.